It's that time again. This is Katney with your weekly Python on Hardware news. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as New York City begins to lift COVID-19 restrictions. We continue to follow the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we are still at a limited capacity. As manufacturing was interrupted, some items may be out of stock. Please look to Adafruit resellers to obtain these items more quickly. In the US, DigiKey is suggested. Visit adafruit.com slash open safely for details. The Adafruit team made a Black Lives Matter sign for nighttime that uses a 64 by 32 RGB LED matrix, the Adafruit Feather, and Circuit Python. These panels are normally used to make video walls. In New York, you see them on the sides of buses and bus stops to display animations or short video clips. You can make them portable and informative. The matrix can also display the names of black people killed by the police, which the Washington Post compiled into a database as a data source on GitHub and saytheirnames.glitch.me. Check out the guide RGB LED matrices with CircuitPython, and the code for this project is available on GitHub. Join Adafruit's anti-racist efforts to end police brutality, reform the criminal justice system, and dismantle the many other forms of systemic racism at work in the U.S. For more information and a list of regularly updated resources, visit adafruit.com slash Black Lives Matter. Real Python interviews CircuitPythonista Katni Rembor. On Real Python this week, Ricky White interviews me, creative engineer at Adafruit Industries. My role is varied as I cover embedded software, hardware design, technical writing, and community leadership. We talk about my work developing CircuitPython and the role mentorship has played in my career to date. I also share my advice for anyone looking to start their first hardware project using CircuitPython. Read the full interview at realpython.com slash interview dash catney dash rembor. In this week's CircuitPython deep dive live stream, Scott worked on ESP32-S2 and electioncal.us, a website to provide election dates and information to folks around the U.S. in both human and machine-readable forms. Scott is also the author of the CircuitPython on Game Boy cartridge. If you wish to see, the design is available on Oshpark as Pi Game Boy version 6. Geek Mom Projects has made a DIY nano leaf sculpture. Triangle PCBs use side-emitting LEDs which diffuse into a translucent acrylic layer. It's freestanding and modular. It is assembled by screwing smaller PCB connectors into the back of adjoining boards. On the back, a system of spring connectors and pads transmit signal and power. A thin buffer layer of clear acrylic keeps the spring connectors from getting crushed. It is all powered by an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M4 Express running circuit Python. Check it out at Geek Mom Project's Twitter. The Sparkline class provides a scrolling line graph where any values added to Sparkline using add value are plotted. Kevin created a Sparkline example for CircuitPython and Display.io with inspiration from a Hackaday article. Details are available at Cybermatch on Twitter, and the code is provided by Kmatch98 on GitHub. Learn how to create a Bluetooth Mandalorian tracking fob for Galaxy's Edge droids using Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Video available on Dead Bothan Society YouTube, and write-up is available on deadbothans.com. Kevin posts to Twitter a pool temperature monitor using an Adafruit Clue with a Kittronic Zip Halo HD. The LEDs change from red to blue when the temperature drops below 69.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and the LCD also displays the temperature. The ChronoPi is a hacker-friendly CircuitPython-powered wristwatch based on the 2020 Open Hardware Summit badge. It will be released soon on Hackster Launch. Check it out on the Hackster.io Twitter. Build a DIY Arc Reactor CPU performance monitor with Arduino and Python. Details are available on thediylife.com and hackster.io. 
Kinger North posts another video to YouTube, this time covering Shift Register Out using CircuitPython and Arduino. Check out a CircuitPython example using an Adafruit Feather M0 and the Vemmel 6075 ultraviolet light sensor on learnmicropython.com. Naomi posts to Twitter an interactive choose-your-own-adventure game using a Raspberry Pi, a thermal printer, and some controls with CircuitPython. Learn it faster, the entire Python language in a single image, available from fossbytes.com. Runtime class modification, only using library features needed, saving RAM depending on the application in a post on blog.hyperlinkyourheart.com. Build physical projects with Python on the Raspberry Pi in this extensive tutorial available at realpython.com slash python raspberry pi. Check out a MicroPython plugin for PyCharm, which auto-detects connected MicroPython devices, uses the nearest source routes as the device route for flashing files, ignore.git and .ideo while flashing, from JetBrains. Learn networking basics on the M5 Stack Wi-Fi scanner in this MicroPython tutorial available on the M5 Stack YouTube. Handle known exceptions in a more elegant way in Python in this quick Python tip, suppress known exception without try except post by Christopher on TowardDataScience.com. Les P. in his Tuesday tooling post discusses Glances, a cross-platform Python-powered system monitoring tool that packs a lot of data into a small package. Check it out at BigL.es. Check out an interactive map of the Linux kernel at makelinux.github.io slash kernel slash map. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers and single board computers grows every week. There were two new boards added this week, the Odroid XU4 and the Odroid XU4Q. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There were two new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Learn how to build a simple physics-based LED hourglass gadget using two small LED matrices and CircuitPython in this guide from Carter Nelson. The number of CircuitPython libraries is 257. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There is one new library this week, Adafruit CircuitPython AHTX0. There are also a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, with the work on the ICM20948 library completed, Brian moved on to finishing up the previously started tester code. Testers are the final arbiter of a board's fitness to be sold, so the tester code is where we make sure we've tested all of the hardware on the breakout board. We can fix libraries later if we've missed something or haven't enabled a feature. However, once the hardware ships to customers, that's how it's going to be for as long as they own it. Testers, and the code that powers them, are responsible for catching any glitches in manufacturing that, while rare, do occur. Making sure the tester code is right is in some ways more important than the library itself. Dan is continuing the re-implementation of CircuitPython underscore BLEIO on host computers using the Bleak Python library. He's using the heart rate monitor library as a test and had to implement most of underscore BLEIO to get even that simple library to work. He had to make some changes to the base Adafruit underscore BLE library to accommodate Python on the host machines, and he's testing now. On the STM32 F405 Feather, Jeff has finished SDIO read and write code. The performance is better than SPI, especially when you are moving more data around. However, even just writing a log file in text, you can log over a thousand lines per second. This is on a fresh class four, four gigabyte SD card. He's not sure how performance changes as the card fills up. This code is in an open pull request on GitHub. So if you're comfortable building CircuitPython from source, you can give it a try today. Next, we want to bring SDIO code to the SAMD51. However, all the existing Adafruit boards use SPI. 
Hopefully this breakout made from an SD card adapter will let him get the prototype working. Melissa was working on catching up with some of her smaller projects. One of the projects she really enjoyed working on was writing a couple of demos for an e-ink bonnet. Since she didn't actually have the e-ink bonnet, she assembled one using the Adafruit Perma Proto hat for the Raspberry Pi, along with an e-ink breakout and a few passive components that she had on hand. One of the demos she worked on went out and fetched weather data and displayed it on the e-ink. This was a little challenging in that using too small of fonts would result in reduced readability, so she needed to experiment with font size, boldness, and the overall layout, and it came together nicely. The code is based on the Pi Portal weather code, but it uses the Mediocons font, which was inspired by Dan Cogliano, to display the weather image, so there's actually no graphics involved in the traditional sense. FlaskCon is a community-driven Flask event being held July 4th and 5th. Flask is a micro-web framework written in Python. Call for Papers is currently open. Visit flaskcon.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd through 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub, Google, or Facebook. If you write another language, Visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 20,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on Hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.